Hey y'all, so I want to talk about something that um, I really, I actually talked about this about a year ago, but the Lord just placed it on my heart recently to talk about it again, because this is something that's escalated, especially within the body of Christ, within the world. It's just something that continues to escalate and get even uh, worse as the world grows, you know, more dependent on its fleshly desires. And the more that people grow dependent on their flesh and the more that people start feeding their flesh, this thing starts growing and people have this thing where they say this is just my truth and this is my truth and this is who I am this is my truth but what I need you to understand and what God needs you to understand and what God desires for you to understand is that if your truth doesn't align with the word of God it doesn't matter it's not the truth the word of God is the absolute truth you have to align everything with the word of God what I find and what a lot of uh, churches are doing what a lot of Christians do is they try to bend the word of God or they try to bend their message to align with what people feel like is their personal truth. We don't do that. We adjust ourselves to align with the word of God. We don't adjust the word of God to align with the people of the world. They need to understand that the word of God is the absolute truth. Even as even as Christians, we have to grow and mature and learn to understand that the word of God is the absolute truth. The word of God is not supposed to um, coddle us 24 7 yes they're accompanying scriptures and I love the book of Psalms David is a beautiful psalmist and those scriptures are there you know to comfort us in our time of need but the word of God isn't only there to comfort us is there to correct us it's balanced this is why we have to rightly divide the word of God this is why that's even a saying there are people who don't they lean too far to one side or the other and it's an imbalance there we're not supposed to be bending the word of God to you know, it's so interesting. There are people who will say, well, you know, to appeal to the world, we have to say things a certain way. And here's the thing. There's a balance to even that as well. To uh, preach to a certain group of people, and this is why I love Paul, because he understood who his audience was as he was writing the different books of the New Testament. To appeal to a certain audience, you have to understand who you're speaking to. And so there are people who will try to bend their message or uh, bend scripture, let me say it, put it that way, to appeal to a certain audience. Don't do that. Don't do that. Scripture is scripture. It is the absolute truth. Even Paul did not do that as he was writing to the different churches. What I love about Paul is that the way that he said things, the, t the tonality and how he would speak to people changed depending on the different churches that he was talking to, but the message stayed the same. Because you don't twist the words of God. You don't twist scripture. You don't take things out here and put things in there to bring people in, to appeal to a certain audience. You don't do that. The message stays the same. And I actually want to read to you. Um, and as you're reading, as you're uh, speaking the word of God and you're sharing that with people as believers, it doesn't matter the tonality that you put it in anyway, because people are going to take it or leave it, right? I want to read to you um, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It says, for the word of God is quick and it's powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. So the word of God within itself, all you have to do is just give people the word of God and it's going to do what it needs to do. It's going to do what it needs to do. But what we as Christians have begun doing, there's even this thing called progressive Christianity. You have to send that back to where it came from because it did not come from God. There are people who literally, and this is a thing, they are justifying the killing of unborn babies. Which babies just as flat out murder, right? And they like to sweep it under the umbrella as if this is my truth. This is what's going on with me. It's my truth. God is God of life. He said that you should have life more abundantly. He, he called Satan the murderer. He said, Satan, you are a murderer from the very beginning. From the very beginning. What's so interesting, I was thinking about this a few days ago and I was talking to my sister about this and we're, we kind of... We said it was really interesting because, you know, if Jesus were here today and he had to go to the cross, there are people who would literally try to pull him off that cross. If he had to go to the cross all over again to die for our sins, or let's just say it never happened and he had to go in this day and age in 2023 to the cross to die for our sins, there are Christians, there are people who would try to pull him off that cross. There are people who would try to convince him not to go to the cross. Why would they do that? Why would they do something like that? Because they did do that back in Jesus' day when he was here, when he did go to the cross. Why would Christians, people who claim to believe in God, do something like that? Because they call evil good and good evil. What they think in their heart is good, they chalk that up as the absolute truth. When the word of God is the absolute truth. I want to take you to um, 
another scripture, Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20 through 21, it says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. This is why I say we have to be very careful because um, this is how the, um, the Pharisees and Sadducees were back in biblical history. They thought that their way was right. They, when Jesus came on the scene, they're like, who are you? We know God and you're not God. They were wise in their own eyes. If Jesus were to go to the cross today, there are Christians who claim to be Christians who would try to convince him not to go to the cross. Because in their mind, they think that it's evil. But God says, woe unto you who are wise in your own eyes, who calls evil good and good evil. We have to begin to take the things that we believe as true about ourselves and about the world and align it with scripture. The absolute truth, the only truth that matters. So I really want to encourage you all to do that because this is something that has caused so much chaos in the world. It's something that's caused chaos so much chaos among Christians. Um, and like I said, there's even an entire other branch of Christianity that branched off progressive Christianity. That's not even a real, the scripture doesn't even, um, that's not even aligning with scripture at all. It's not. We don't bend the word of God to align with people. We bend ourselves. We mold ourselves. We, the, God is the potter molding us to align with what his word says. It's not the other way around. So I really felt a heavy pressing in my spirit to share this with you all today. I love you all so much. And this is why, you know, I was, I've been studying the books of Paul's, Paul. Actually, there is someone that I would love to meet. It would be David because David is a beautiful psalmist. I love David's heart and I just love, uh, you know, <laughs> David and his character. And I love all of the books that Paul wrote. And I just really love reading the way that Paul writes. I believe he was very intelligent and prolific in the sense that he was way ahead of his time. And the way that he writes, it's very interesting that he kept in mind the audience that he was writing to. And he would, the tonality would change. You could see it in the way that he's writing to the churches, depending on what church he was writing to and what they were going through and what they were struggling with. You could see the change in tonality and how he writes. But the thing that I want you to understand and the thing that I grabbed is that the message never changed. The message never changed. So I love you all. I'll leave you with that. I want you to comment below if this resonated with you. I invite you to subscribe and share this message and hit the notification bell. For those of you who are asking, I have gotten some emails and I've seen like one or two comments in the videos. How do you join Journey Through the Wilderness? Journey Through the Wilderness is a course specifically for those of you who are in a wilderness season. I will actually link some messages below for you to kind of listen to and determine if that's you if you're in a wilderness season. To join, you would just click the link below where it says Journey Through the Wilderness and it'll take you through the steps to join. If you have any questions on that, just email me at hello at shannonwellsministries.com. And those that are in there have had nothing but a beautiful experience from the first lesson alone. The first lesson alone, I'm telling you, super transformational and it just keeps getting better as you go through the lessons. So I just wanted to leave that there because people have been asking. I love you all. There's so many other resources for you below. If you would like to sew into the ministry, that's uh, an option for you too. I would never not tell people to do that because I know that that act alone has broken so many chains off my life. That option's below for you as well. I love you all so much with the heart of Jesus. I'm always praying for you and I'll, I'll talk with you in the next message.